Jumped over everything. I, I, I mounted the defense of, of Afrocentric scholarship. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's um, what's it called? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. But, but that's, that's what that's what I well, that's what I you last week. That's what I always talked to you about. Right. But he was um um content okay. was saying to talk about it anyway. But I didn't go into it. Okay. I, I just I just briefly touched on it. Inshallah, the sun came out. Yeah? Okay, let's do let's have, yeah, yeah. let's have a discussion about this. Mm. So um, last camera action. Let me, yeah. Tendamware. Assalamu alaikum. Tendamware means essentially the same yes, thing. Sir, yes, sir, yes, so sir. we are about to have a discussion which brother, young Mbandaka brother Shakara, will tee up the discussion <laughs> and I will hand over the microphone to him. To right, do, so so all it was is that um, obviously as you some of you would have seen last week, um, there was I, I started to I open the conversation. Uh, based upon a conversation I heard the brothers having uh, a few weeks before in relation to what is considered to be the unfair way um, and sometimes inaccurate ways in which um, Afrocentrics yeah, and african centric scholars treat Islam. Yeah? And so last week, really what I, was, I, I kind of started by doing was more starting by giving a, a definition of the Afrocentric scholarship tradition mm. and broadly what people are trying to do yeah. and the problems that people are trying to solve within it right and so my, my basic argument we can go into this more is that oftentimes we were talking about challenging the historicity that was um written by europe and europeans in relation to african people so a lot of early uh african historians who involved which, which involved in the afrocentric tradition were challenging uh the, the lies that were being told by europeans first and foremost mm -hmm. the second thing was they began to challenge the, the way in which African culture has been degraded, yeah, um, and made subordinate and inferior to European culture. But it, it so happens that when you when you engage in that study and you look at it in terms of spirituality and culture, that much of the same characteristics that the Christians imposed upon African people, and African culture, were also imposed, yeah, mm -hmm. on, 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 on the followers and the people that brought us Islam. Mm -hmm. and, all, and, and, and some of those things were adopted by many Africans who adopted these religions, if mm -hmm. that makes sense, yep. in terms of the condemnation yes. uh, of, of, of African uh, spiritual systems and culture mm -hmm. and a neglect uh, for African history in that regard. Yes. And, and so um, the treatment of, because the African Centre Scholar is, the, is inherently attempting to, to, to restore dignity and truth to things African and validate things that are African. It'll take the form it, of a polemic. Right, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and it, but it would, necess it would mm. necessitate a critique of Islam right. in the context of Islam's relationship yes. with the things that the Afrocentric tradition uh -huh. is defending. Right. Do, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So, so I, I, I was really putting it into, into that context and, right. and, the, and the idea that, that it's a, I was challenging the idea it's unfair, first mm. and foremost, and um, and that's, that was the basic thing, mm. but then obviously out of that comes now what, what exactly is true or false mm. within the things that are being said. Just well, I, I think that when you look at my misgivings mm -hmm. about our relationship, the relationship between Muslims and Afrocentrists, it is the attempt to excise right. black Muslims, African Muslims, from the Pan-African struggle and the Pan-African family. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of reconstruction of history. And that is, to me, problematic when you talk about even modern history like Malcolm X mm -hmm. and that period of the 1940s, mm -hmm. if you're talking about absolutely recent history. So forget about going back into the past. Recent history is, is star-studded with Muslims who have been involved in Pan-African struggle. And I think, therefore, it is a little unfair to attempt, I'm not saying you, the Pan-Africanists who do so. Yeah. The ones I kind of sometimes derisively call hoteps. Yes. Right? When they attempt to, to, to disqualify or write Muslim contribution out of the record, that is where I and they have a, an argument. I, I hear yeah. that. I, I should have started with this here. Yeah. I, so I, I, I'm this. I'm, I'm. I'm. I am 
seeking an audience of an elder. There's a tradition in mm. South Africa, West Africa, whereby if you want to disagree with an elder, you ask to disagree, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. So I'm asking to disagree with you at the moment. About, that uncle, is fine. Right? My you know hand saying? has touched right? the ground. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, right? and I, so I, I want to make that clear yes. because I don't want I don't want it to be in question uh -huh. that I respect you, even uh -huh. though I'm challenging you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Just I'm saying. So I want yeah. to make that clear on yes. camera. All right. Yes. Um, and and the same goes for it yourself. It also brother. gives me yeah? good ideas to write about. So tell us. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. So now, in that regard, mm. I, I'd agree with you that it would be, it would be, for those who are doing this, it, it would be wrong to try and x out uh, the fact that there are African who's, who, Africans who are Muslims in the Pan African tradition. Mm. Yeah. As recently as the sixties, and well, yeah. you know, yeah. But, but I'd argue that, yeah. more, but that the overwhelming majority of, the, of Pan Africans don't do that, uh, and, and I'd argue that Malcolm X is no less loved among Pan-Africanists because of the fact that he was Muslim. Um, Sekoture, uh, Madibo Keita, you know what I'm saying? There are so many that are, that are stalwarts in the Pan-African tradition, yes. in spite of their yes. Islam, even among you, those who criticize you're Islam. You're actually stealing my clothes. Right, right. I was about to actually add that aspect in terms of the era of African nationalism. Right. I was about to add people like Madibo Keita and right. Sekoture. Mm -hmm. And what I will say is that there is a hope Yes. that these leaders mm -hmm. are more pan-Africanist yes. than Muslim, if you are an Afrocentrist. Yes, definitely. If you are, if you are I, a I, socialist, yeah. yes. you will hope yes. that they are more socialist yes. than whatever else, yes. Islamic or pan-Africanist. Yes. And if you are a Muslim, yes. you will hope yes. that they are more Muslim yes. than socialist yes. or Afrocentrist. Yes. I don't know why I'm pointing at you, because I am also an Afrocentrist. I know this, yeah. You saw, <laughs> you know, we are there yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's about truth. Yes. So, what I have, I do encounter, you know what it's like? I'll tell you what I think this discussion is like. You know when you meet a, or it, I put something on social media recently, mm -hmm. but you are not on those pages so you wouldn't see it. Mm -hmm. Some Indian writer put a picture on the toilet and he put, white people learn to wash your bums. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. so I put it on the British Muslim experience. Oh, wow. There are a lot of white Muslims there, and they got offended. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, they yes. came at me saying, "We thought you were agreeable. Mm -hmm. We thought you were were uh, a Muslim, but you are a racist." Right, right. So right. then I said to them, "Here's the problem. You are the good white man, mm -hmm. and of a of a of a necessity, you will encounter." When you come among black people, black people who cannot differentiate between the good white man and the white supremacist. So you may get the brunt of what he is feeling, yes. which perhaps may be unfair. Yes. Now, it is similar. Mm -hmm. I find when I encounter this kind of argument, you may not encounter it. Why? Because you are on the page of Afrocentrism. You are plumb in the middle. I am having one foot in Afrocentrism and one foot in Islam. That's how they would see it. So I will get a lot of pushback from Muslims yeah, yeah. who say, ah, one foot, is, is that enough? Mm -hmm. And then I will get pushback from the Afro. So what I am experiencing mm -hmm. in terms of people trying to disqualify us, Afrocentrists, yeah. from the Pan-African family, you will not experience it. Mm -hmm. So because I am trying to reply to what you just said about, you don't really get that vibe. Mm -hmm. I get it a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I, I understand <laughs> it, but because it's not that, the fact that I am on that side of You've it. You've read some of the threads. No, of the You've read some of the I'll come, I'm going to come to that. I'm going to come to that. But m most of the point is because yeah. because I am part of that community, yes. I have a perspective on what it is that you're talking about. Yes. And, and so I know where you're coming from. Yeah. What I would argue is the, the critique and the rejection is more mm. in relation to Islam itself right. than African people in Islam. And the extent to which uh, Africans who are Isla in Islam are capable. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, point taken. Africans who are in Islam mm -hmm. uh, work for or against the interest of a more uh, a constructive... Pan Umar, but, or but, rather than yeah, Pan-Africa. Pan -Africa, yeah, mm. you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm. And, and so when we look at... And so now, we have to create a distinction now, although it's a very loose distinction, mm -hmm. between Afrocentricity on the one hand and Pan-Africanism on the other. Mm -hmm. okay. there's, there's a lot of overlap. Yeah. Um, but they're not necessarily the same thing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and why, why, why I say that is because for those who are Pan-Africanists, a lot of them are more politically inclined. For so those they're socialists. Who, yeah, yeah, right? So they're, they're, they're dealing with politics, colonialism, neo-colonialism, mm -hmm. that yep. kind of thing. Mm. For those who are more Afrocentric, come on that banner, mm. that's, the, that's an intellectual tradition, mm -hmm. a scholarship tradition that has more cultural 
concerns, mm -hmm. right? So when the Afrocentric comes, he's dealing with well, how, what about uh, African culture was degraded mm -hmm. and why? Mm -hmm. And he places uh, conversion to Islam in the category of contributory factors mm -hmm. to the degradation of African culture. Right. Do, do, do you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. and, 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 I, and, I, and I believe that there is grounds yeah, yeah. for that there argument. There is some ground. Right? But what he doesn't do, what he lacks is balance. What he refuses to do is to take on board the positives that, Af that uh, Islamic culture or Islam has brought to Africa. Right. And by doing that, I think he does a tremendous disservice in, to, in, in, in the pursuit of truth. It's not a balanced argument. To only look at the, 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 the demerits mm -hmm. of Islam in Africa mm -hmm. is to give a very... I wouldn't let my child taught that yeah. in an Afrocentric Saturday school. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. wouldn't want that because I'll say, but wait, there are so many things yes. that Islamic culture has contributed yes. to Africa, West and East Africa, yeah. that such an argument is giving only less than half the picture. I like, I, the fact, I like the fact that you use the, the Saturday School example because mm. I have some experience with this. Right. I've taught in an mm. African yes. Saturday School for most yes. of my life. I'm mm. associated with a lot of it. Mm. And if, would you believe me if I told you that generally speaking, African Saturday Schools don't have a problem mm. with teaching about is, is, Islamic empires in right. Africa. Right. I, 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 I put it to you mm. that the glory of empires like Mali and Songhai and Karnem Bornu mm -hmm. and others, yeah, mm -hmm. Swahili states and them kind mm -hmm. of things there. The glory of those empires was brought to the forefront mm -hmm. more by Afrocentric and proto-Afrocentric historians. When I say proto-Afrocentric mm -hmm. now, I'm referring to people like um, John Henry Clark um, in particular um, and uh, Sheikh Hattab Diop and them kind of people there. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 they're prior to the advent of the tradition of Afrocentricity in name, mm -hmm. but they inform its development, mm -hmm. right? But those black historians who are Pan-Africanists in the, in the inclination, but were not Muslims, were, were the ones who put forward mm -hmm. and raised the profile of these African empires who adhere to Islam mm. um, on the world stage. And, I think and this because, was mm, no. I think with uh, Job less East Africa, Job focused less on, on East on Africa. The, yeah, he didn't focus that much along the Eastern seaboard that you mentioned. But definitely West. Yeah, he de oh, definitely the West because yeah. he was from there. Yeah. You know, and he had a particular emotional input yeah. in that area. And I think of the ones that you mentioned, Yes, it is impossible, you see. I don't know how it could be otherwise, uh, brother, to discuss West Africa without talking about Kanembornu, as you mentioned, Darfur, yeah. Wede, yeah. Um, uh, you said mentioned Songhai, yeah. and ancient Mali. Yeah. To mention African history yeah. without them right. would be to be leaving a big black hole, totally. a big time gap empty. Totally. So I don't, so I don't see how it could be otherwise. Right. Yeah. Mm. But I'm saying that a lot of the Muslim brothers and sisters, yes, who are who are studying these empires now, right, are are, are building, are, are doing so, relying on the work of non-Muslim African-centered historians before them. Absolutely not. I'll tell you why. Right. I'll tell you why. Here's the rub. Yeah. When we discuss African history, yes, we are forced to rely on archaeological sources. Definitely. We are forced to rely on oral account. Yes. And we are forced to rely on written records. Yes. Some of the more substantive evidence comes from the written record. Yes. If you look at the written record, yes. the majority of the written record was in Arabic. Yes. The early Al Bakri, Al Masoudi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you know the. I name. get the point you're making. So. When you talk about, say, Sheikh Anta Jof yes. or uh, Basil Davidson yes. or whomsoever, going to the or, uh, original text, yeah, yeah, yeah. the original sources written, the corpus. Come in, bro, come in, come in, come in. Alaikum salam, the fuck's ball. Big man, Shaq, you see, you tell him you're king. You good, yes. The, the, the corpus of early African sources are in Arabic and they were written by Muslim scholars. Yes. So. I think perhaps if an Afrocentrist yes. says that he is the first to highlight yes. Mali, Ghana, Songhai, uh, Kanemborunu, no, the sources from which he got the material, the original sources, yeah, yeah. Not the, he could have got them from the Orientalists, but the Orientalists got them translated out of Arabic. People like Nehemiah Lepcion and these scholars no, no. translated it yeah. from the Arabic. I, yeah. I, I take your point. Yeah. Um, and the, our points are not actually conflicting. No, I, I would no. agree mm -hmm. that the, that John Henry Clark and, and the like were relying upon the scholarship. Yeah, yeah, right. Just yeah. what I'm saying, written by yeah. um, uh, you, you mentioned Al Bakri, Bakari, um, Al Bakri, Batuta, 
Ibn Battuta, Ibn Khalikan, Ibn Lathir. And in texts such as the Tariq Al-Sudan. Right, all those people. That's Ahmad Baba, Mahmoud Kati. All of people. And for the record, I read them in Arabic. Yeah, but bearing in mind that these are, those will be considered primary sources. Right. Often from the time. Some of them are not exclusively from the time. Yeah. Some of them, they document the time, but as well as they take into consideration the stories written by the griots of ancient Mali or something. Right, yes. So they, they, they incorporate yes. all those things. So, yes, otherwise yeah. you have a yeah. big gla- you right. have another black hole. Right. Yeah. Now, it's a good point. We're going to come back to that point yep. in a second. Yep. Yeah? Yep. But m- more what I'm talking about, though, is the fact that I don't I don't know mm. yeah, that that the empires of Mali and Songhai were, were, were significantly celebrated organically um, in the, the Muslim world. Yeah, uh, outside of Africa, um, uh, by organically, by the Ummah, the Muslim Ummah, in the same way that Ghana, Mali, and Songhai, and all these were celebrated by African people who were studying their history and joined Pan African organizations or the Afrocentric Scholarship Movement and, and these kinds of things. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So I'm saying that a lot of black women that, that I, I've 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 must been associated black women all my life, yeah. Yes. And I, I would come and know a lot of, about these empires that they didn't know. Right. And I'm seeing more take it on now, mm-hmm. but they, but they, but they, because there's YouTube and you've got videos of John Henry Clark, yeah, breaking down the, the science. And there's a book written by Robin Walker, who's not a Muslim, but has significant chapters, yeah, dedicated to breaking down the history of Ghana, of Mali and Songhai and Kanem Bonu and, and all these things. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. So, so it's not, it's not as though we've, 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 we've had a, a, a tradition of, of neglecting and rejecting because of the sake of Islam. Mm. It's just that there are those who, once they acknowledge that these empires were great, mm. they, 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 they also go forward to analyze, well, what, what, how did the, the coming of Islam impact the society and the culture mm. in wider ways? Yeah. And they also would say, and they, and they, and they also would look at, um, put it this way, the African-centered uh, scholar is no more biased or no, no more limiting in terms of how they treat that than the Muslim who looks at Mali and Songhai and simply refers to them as Islamic empires in Africa and believes that they were great because of the fact of Islam. Do you understand well, what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah? Oh, let me try to unpack some of what you said there. Yes. <clears throat> First of all, if you look at Africa as a, as a whole, yes. you have some empires that were Islamic yes. and some that were not. Yes. If you're going to do history, yes. you have to mention that difference. So if you are an historian, you will say right. this empire yeah. has a lot to do with Islam. The writings, we mentioned the scholars of Timbuktu just now, yeah. the three scholars of Timbuktu, don't you call the names again? Yes. Right, Ahmed Baba, Mahmoud yeah. Kati. So when you look at that, you have to say these writings were done in Arabic. Yes. This, these guys were Muslim scholars. Yes. And they, why they, they had a connection with the Muslim world, but because yes. of their sheer distance at the very end of the Muslim world, yes. the nucleus of the Muslim world was not in touch with them. Yes. Similarly, until recently, you heard very little about Islam from the Ummah, about Indonesia, because it was that far. Mm-hmm. Yet Indonesia, if you do a counting of heads, has the most Muslims in the world. Yes. So you have that, the, 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 I would put that down as a function of distance Mm -hmm. more than anything else. You think so? Yes, it's a function of distance. The Muslim scholars spoke about the celebrated people like Mansak and Kamusa and Muhammad Askia Ture because they actually performed the pilgrimage. The Hajj, yeah. Yeah, and they made, much was made of the pilgrimage and all in Egypt, people talk about it for years. In fact, I have mixed feelings about that because it inspired a, a greed for gold and all the rest of it, people looking for Timbuktu for gold, more than anything else. But, so that's what I'm trying to say. The sheer distance of the Muslim world yes. left. Now, as a Muslim, I'm also here to say, because I am a Muslim, yes. and I've been a Muslim a very long time. Mm-hmm. Probably, long, probably longer than I've been alive. <laughs> just, uh, and I've been black also a very long time. I know that there's a tradition of black Muslim scholarship. Yes. That perhaps Robin Walker, with all due respect, yes. is a new scholar to me. In my, I can tell him that to his face. So what, what, what is it? Is it, is it what's the Truly, Islam, this, this Islam is Islam within Africa. Yeah, 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 Kaida, 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 Kaida,
I've no. been in the game, I've been, and I can tell you Robin Walker is a recent scholar. Of, of, I know of, the book yeah, he wrote about Songa. Of course he's new. Most of the sources, are, I know the book well. I know Saran Keita, the lady who helped him with the research. Oh, no Most of that. it is secondary sources. There's no doubt about that. But okay. Robin Walker is new. Um, uh, John Henry Clark is not new. I'm not sure the John Henry Clark new. ever visited Africa. He did, he did. At, he where did, did he go? Um, and what research he, he's did been to, He's been to Kenya and he's been to West Africa. I can't remember all the countries, but How? I know for a fact. But um, uncle, uncle, let uh, us go into Sheikh. Let us go into him and Yosef Ben Yokanan a little. Yes. You see, I knew Yosef. I was a personal friend of Dr. Ben. Okay. Um, I wasn't a friend, but I did meet him. I knew I him very well. As a child, I did meet him. He came to Trinidad. We invited him as a member of the Caribbean Historical Society. Yeah. We invited him, Dr. Charles Finch, yeah. Professor Ivan Van Sertima. Yeah. And of the three, I would say the person with the most real accreditation is yeah. Professor Ivan Van Sertima. Mm -hmm. Of the three. Now, when you say accreditation, uh, you mean that formal institutional accreditation? Yes, right. uh, it's hard to say these things about elders, but in those days, many of our leaders claimed certification that they did not have. What they did to their credit was actually go and do a lot of field work. So they had a lot of knowledge without the actual accreditation. That's a point that's got to Which be Dr. made. Which Dr. Ben is a pioneer in. And that, that I think research. Professor Hendrik Clark himself yes. Yes. has a very he's what I would call a generalist historian. Right, well. He's not a specialist historian. And you know I argued this before. Chancellor Williams was not a specialist historian either. Now what I look at are these empires from the inside. I am able to look at the Arabic text yes. and look at how these empires develop. Yes. With the greatest of respect to those elders yes. on whose shoulders I'm standing yes. they were not Dr. Ben didn't know how to read Arabic. Of course not. Mm. And he would pronounce Abu Bakr Abu Baker. Abu Baker. Things like Abu Baker, Abu Baker. right? And mm. you couldn't correct him because you are. Right? It would tell you about yourself. Yeah. Because you are, right? Now, even up when scholars start manufacturing their lineage, mm -hmm. I have problems. I understand why it had to be done at some stage in history to lend a certain amount of pedigree to back up what you're saying. Yeah. But at the same time, I have to tell you that I know the old scholars and I know the new scholars. Yeah. And with the new scholars, they're relying purely on secondary sources. With the older heads of scholars too, they did not read African history from its primary text sources in Arabic. They couldn't do it. Yeah. So what I am trying to tell you is that I was around a group of people in the 70s who did that. So you may not have been, because you're not a Muslim, you may not have been aware that there were Muslims doing it. But I am aware of it. I'm, mm. I'm not, I'm not just saying... Like you don't, just like you're not aware that there are people who get on Muslims, yeah. Afrocentrists, hoteps, right. who get on Muslims yeah. for being sellouts yeah. or Trojan horses right. or, or Arabian horses. Right. But because I am a Muslim, I no, get no, no. it. I and I wouldn't lie about it. I said that. Because you remember when I lost my temper a little bit the other day, and I said to them, none of you all know how to read the Medunetta yeah, in the original. I, yeah, I, I You're criticizing that. us for being, for being Trojan horses or whatever you're calling us, but you can't read your text. You have to rely on white but, uh, people uncle. to translate the Rosetta Stone. But, uncle, but, okay. mm. All right. I, I'm, mm. Remind me to come back to that point, right? Because with respect, I believe that 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 claim mm. is a little bit unfair. That's fair. No, it, uh, but That's I, fair. I, 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 you I, I, all I, can't can read I, no, yeah. the medal. I, I, I hear that. I hear that. Except I hear that. your professor. What's that. his name? The one you brought. That. The one you brought. Um, the young brother the, from in Ghana, living in Ghana. No, Diop couldn't even read it properly. Dr. Ben could read some. Little. Yeah, little. 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 But, but, uncle. Yeah. Your man can read it. The guy who speaks over ten languages. Um, What's your man? No, say, not no, um, I equate I'm up. The young dude in Ghana, he's, a, he's an African American, I think. Oh, you were interviewing yeah, him the Ka other day. Yeah, um, um, Abu Lele Kambon. He can yeah. read it. He and can read. And, it. and I would say, but here's me. Here's me. Here, there's a, but there's here's a, me. These guys will tell uncle. you. Here's what they will tell you. Yeah. They will tell you this is the Meduneta, and this bit the white man mistranslated. Yeah. That bit is a. How do they know that? I well, don't I, I don't. I don't read the language. Uh, exactly. So I, 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 could, I, could, I couldn't give you an answer. No, that what I do. What worries me about this? It but becomes. Uncle. It becomes like I'm boxing with Ali. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm boxing with Ali. Every time I try, he moves. 
right? And whereas with Islam, Islam is a static target, so people can take pot shots with it. The Quran says, especially, especially the literalists. Yeah. I'm not a literalist, but the literalists, it's easy to be attacking them because that is a block. That book is a block like the Kaaba. It can't move and you can hit it. Now, with the Afrocentric scholarship, when you, when, you, when, you, when you come at them and say this, they move. It moves. It becomes a moving target. And I say, look, either it is or it isn't. And that is why you find it is a, 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 a living, it's surviving, and it's growing. Because basically, it's being transformed by people who are living today into what they want it to be. Right. But that's good and it's bad. It's both good and bad. Oh, well, mm. the, the, the thing is, first of all, I, w I wasn't making the claim mm. that um, that um, the, the, the scholars that I mentioned mm. um, are, are old. The only part I was making with that mm -hmm. is that there's, it's not unusual for scholars, historians within mm. the Pan-African or Afrocentric tradition to celebrate Mali and Songhai mm. and other Islamic empires right. without no, but you said yeah, but, our Muslims don't do it, and I'm saying no, 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 I'm no, not, I'm, no. Yeah. But I, I oh. It's not that Muslims don't do it. Either. For example, I know, yeah. for example, mm. of the fact that um, Malcolm X in right. the 1960s, mm. the Nation of Islam in general, was teaching about the fact of um, some of us coming from the mm. continent mm. being Muslim. Mm. Yes, mm. I, I know that. Mm. What I'm saying is, in terms of raising the profile of these empires in Africa, mm. it was largely the scholar. A lot of um, Malcolm X was taught a lot about Mali and Songhai from John Henry Clark. They knew each other personally. I know, yeah, they were right, friends. Right, so, so, my, so, my point, so, so the, the point I'm making mm. is, a lot of this information was brought to the forefront. John Henry Clark defines himself, you know, as a classroom teacher. He never defined himself as, a, as the most superior historian. Mm -hmm. the, the, but his studies mm. made him eminent within the community that he was in. Right. And he was given a certain... Right. And he did actually eventually get official accreditation. Yeah? Mm -hmm. he was, he's not a trained historian. I know. But he, but he went mm. and, and he went, went through the process. And the he, trained historian and all of all is Professor Ivan Van Sertino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And I still challenge some of his some research. Some of his... But that, that's the case. But Ivan Van Sertima, mm. Dr. Ben, Chancellor Williams, Charles Finch, um, uh, John G. Jo Jackson. John G. Jackson. They all, knew, they all knew each other. Right. I have answered and I never challenged the, credit, the, 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 the credibility of John Henry Clark um, and Chancellor Williams and these no, things. Because they had disagreements. I know why they right? wouldn't as well. Look, I was close to the people who know them, the ones that I don't know. Mm -hmm. I was close to the people who know them. Yeah. We used to bring some of them to Trinidad. Trinidad was a center yeah. of this sort of scholarship in the 70s mm -hmm. when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. So I was grounded in this, all these traditions. Mm -hmm. What I am saying is perhaps we, I don't know if we, I think we are agreeing, so I don't know why we are, why, why no, we... No, 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 it's, 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 it's exploring the point. We, we, we're, looking, we're looking at Islam here. Yes. And what you're saying is this. The Afrocentric scholars yes. should be given a certain amount of kudos for having highlighted Ghana, Mali and Songhai. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, not, well, Mali, Songhai, Kanem, mm -hmm. the Muslim ones. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I am saying, fine. But what I'm also saying is because I come from the Muslim tradition yes. as well, yes. I know Muslim scholars who are doing it. If because you're not inside the Muslim tradition, you don't know of them. Not necessarily, Uncle, because I will give you saying, a, I'll give you a very big one. Yeah. Entry, you see, you don't know no, those no, no. names. Here I'm saying, it's not... I don't give you names. No, I don't, but I don't want, okay, I don't, I don't want what I'm saying to be Because I sat at their feet. Yeah. Like Ma Malam Salahuddin Tayo from, from Nigeria, mm. who came to Trinidad in the 70s, and he, the first thing he taught us was you are not Negroes. The Quran says, call them by their proper names. Mm -hmm. You are not <laughs> Negroes. But Uncle, no, I'm, I'm not saying that there was nobody in the Muslim world doing it. Mm. What I'm saying is... No, I can is, call many. Yeah, but you seem to think there were none. No, no, no. Or few. There were many. Let me clarify one point. Mm. We all respect you. Yeah. What I'm saying is, the profile mm. of African empires being elevated in that way right. was off, was the, that, that work yeah, was done by these scholars in the Afrocentric tradition. I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. So, so even, even a lot of black Muslims, mm. if, if you name 10 names right now of mm. these Muslim scholars that were doing this work, right. they probably couldn't tell you their names. Mm. But they could probably tell you the name John Henry Clark. The reason right? why is because, I'll tell you the reason why. They were not bilingual. He is bilingual. I'm bi I'm a biliterate, what was the word is. So right? would you would you concede then that my we, point doesn't, no, no, does, doesn't I, apply I, to the English speaking world? I, I will concede it, yeah. but I'm being mischievous. I shan't concede it. <laughs> because we have, to have a bit of a, we have to have a bit of a fight. Yeah, it's, it's going too nice. <laughs> it's, we, we're too pleasant, you know? <laughs> <laughs> He's not arguing, it's a bigger crowd. Yeah, yeah. It's a bigger crowd. <laughs> 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 no. 
what it is is because we are biliterate, yes. we have access to these texts yes. in both languages. Yes. So the Afrocentrist will speak about, oh, I read this from yes. John Henry Clark. Yes. I read it from Professor Sheikh Andrew Job. Yes. I read it from Dr. Ivan Van Serdima. Yes. I read it from Dr. Charles Finch. Yes. But none of these wrote or read in Arabic. They never okay. read primary. Oh, except Job. No, Job no, 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 is no. the only one yeah. who read Arabic. Arabic. But most Muslims don't read Arabic. Who said, what? No, we're not talking about most Muslims here. No, we're I'm, talking about scholars. No, you are kidnapping me. We're not kidnapping me. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not. We're talking just, about, no, let me, let, let, let me come to it. What I'm, what it's saying is this. There were scholars who were teaching this. Yes. Because they have access to the primary sources. Yes. People in the West wouldn't know about it, even if they're in the West, mm -hmm. because they speak into Muslims. Yes. And they, basically, they, they preach it to the convert. Mm -hmm. They speak into a select audience. Yes. Whereas Afrocentrism, you speak to anybody who is black. Whereas with the Muslim is community... Isn't that the point I'm making? Not really. What you're saying is that we, we learned about these things, about Mali, Songa and Ghana, which, which, which I've already agreed. Mm -hmm. So we can move on from that yes. by saying that these people right. elevated these right. empires. And I'm saying that Muslim We've, scholars... It's part, of their being, it's part of them being Muslim. So they, them yep. being Muslim was yep. not an impediment because they to, had no to them, to no, them celebrating their greatness. They had no beef with Islam. They had no they? beef. But, but, but... Job had beef with Islam. No. no, no, no. John Henry Clark was critical of Islam. He was critical and, and of Ali Masrui. No, 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 no. He was critical of Ali Masrui. No, Masrui. but he was critical of... He, John Henry Clark mm. was one of those mm. who, ch who challenged the Abrahamic supremacy yep. of spirituality yeah, yeah. in Africa. Yep. And so in that context, he criticised yep. uh, uh, Islam religion and was in, Henry in, Clark? In, in, in that context. What religion was he? He, he never... He comes from a Christian yes. background, but he and never I, professed... I, I think he was buried as a Christian as well. Many many are. I know, I know, but... Uh, I know, see, this is the but contradiction. I, but, I, but I know Rastafari that are buried as Christian. Chancellor Williams was a Christian till the day he died. Uh, sir, sir. He was a Christian. Christian. So, what when that? I... What, what, what? There are, there are, uncle, you and I both mm -hmm. know, yeah, yep. as Africans coming from the Caribbean, mm -hmm. that the, the church has a role in certain social order. Right. Right, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, um. But you have to stand by your product. No. And that's why Islam wins. I'll tell you why Islam wins. I'll tell you why. When white people teach black people mm. about Christianity, they don't have a church where black people can't go into. So black people go and form their own Baptist church. With Islam, and this is a hard thing for Afrocentrists to swallow. When an Arab or a part, well, Arab, he wouldn't have known Pakistan is in those days. When an Arab came to Africa, he prayed with the people, he ate with the people, he sat with the people. Uh, what did they do? Wow. Let, me, let, let me land. Let me show you. No, 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 you're going to do your conspiracy theory when I'm done. <laughs> what I'm trying to show you is this. When people stand by their product, yes. you are inclined to buy it. Yes. If people don't, the white man gave us Christianity and then backed us and then practiced it. He stopped practicing. Yeah. All these churches are empty. Yeah. So what happened with black people? Black people said, we just got sold a pop. Mm. This religion is a religion that was given to us to control us. Yes. So it's passing strange for me to find people like Chancellor Williams still a Christian. Knowing fully, what, now with Muslims, the difference is in Africa. In East, if you see, if you go to any part of the, as much as I criticize the kingdom of Saudi Arabia or Qatar, wherever you go, a mosque is full, not like a church in England. So what the, the difference is, and in the Muslim, in, in black Africa, where you go, mosques are full. So what Muslims, I think one of the beauties of, one of the things that helped spread Islam is the fact that the Arabs actually practice what they preached and they stood by their product. And when people see that, they are inclined to believe that is conviction. Now, with people, I worry about people, not, not worry about people like Chancellor Williamson. I hear what they say, I read what they say, and he writes things like, at the end of his book, in his conclusion, the white man is the black man's eternal. perpetual eternal. <laughs> you know the quote, you know the quotation. And I said to myself, well, knowing what you know, why do you continue with this? Why not? The, the, that book, and, and mm. this, so the, Charles Williams' book is a very interesting one, mm. and I, I'm I'm f very familiar with the fact that my Muslim brothers and sisters have a great problem with that book, and 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 I don't think it, I don't think the the, the criticism that that it, that it gets it mm. deserves, mm. frankly. Charles Williams is critical of all kinds of things in that book, 
including indigenous African society, spiritualities and culture. Which ones, for right? example? Which ones? Yeah. Just in general. No, in I should like you cite one. In, in terms of... Give us one. I have not heard him for, cr for, criticize for, any indigenous tradition. For example, book. for example, the Mossi. Yeah. He loved the Mossi and so do and I. He did, he did. He did love the Mossi. As Mossie. do I. He did love the Mossi. Mm -hmm. But they, they got to a point yep. whereby they, they started look to... At the, look at those geese flying. Look at them. Those yeah. birds. Yes, sir. Look at them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They breed, they're, they're looking for Mama nesting nature, trees. You know? Mama nature. Yeah. They're looking <laughs> for... No, they're, they're nesting trees. They're looking for high trees yes, to yes, nest yes. in. That you're talking, yeah. No, <laughs> those are African Egyptian geese. They're African. We can talk about them. They're great. <laughs> it's, 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 on it's on subject. It's on subject, right? Yeah. Um, the Mossi and Chen from Williams. He criticizes uh, the fact that they, they, they started to deviate from their better health traditions that were protecting them at certain points. Right. That, that whole book is actually uh, a, a, an exploration mm -hmm. of the weaknesses among our societies well, why that allow for us to be invaded. Why does he say they deviated? Right? Why does he say they deviated? Um, there, there are various different reasons. There, there very, I can't remember all the reasons off, off the top of my head, but basically mm -hmm. he, he's, critic, he's critiquing the fact that after a while, they, they, they opened the door mm. for, the, for, the, for the British and the French at a certain point, mm. and that led to the destruction of the, of, of, of the empire, mm. right? Of the, mm. of the nation, right? Now, mm -hmm. bear this in mind, because we're on the Mossy now, yeah? so let's, let's, let's take the conversation to a deeper level, mm. all right? But you know, we didn't with Chancellor, we're no, no, looking no. at his book. But, but yeah, but um, I'm, yeah. I'm going I'm to deal with mm -hmm. it, yeah? Mm -hmm. The reason why Chancellor Williams celebrates the Mossy mm -hmm. and, and loves the Mossy mm -hmm. is because they were a group of people who were able to withstand and refuse to convert to Islam or Christianity. Right. That's why he's celebrating it. Yes. You would agree with me, right? Yes. Okay. Now, in that context, we have to look at why is why is he celebrating that? Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, Matsa Musa. Yep. Uh, Askia Muhammad Turi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Askia the Great. Yeah. Right? He fought them. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. What's the, and, 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 the, who? Yeah. Were fought by the Muslims. Them mm -hmm. kind of thing. There. Right. Now, these are people that are largely celebrated in in African history among. All kinds of black people that study African history, Muslims and, and, and non-Muslims, yeah, with critiques from I've others. Heard them celebrate Mansa Musa, but not so much Askia. No man, I, I grew up with in, in the Pan African community. You mean with the big pictures? With big posters of I know Askia, the posters. Right, and the kind of things yeah. there. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right, so. But of course, so, right. there's no way you can avoid it. Right, no. You can't but, not speak about Islam in but, Africa. No, but, but in, that's the point. Yeah. If, but that's the point. No, but you can't it's, do. It's, you can't not do. But I'm not mm. saying that we. I'm not saying we can. But we did. Right, yeah. so, so the point. Yeah, but the I'm, saying, yeah, I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying, I have to tie you to this. There yes. was no other way. You would have, you been left with a chronological there, black hole. There is another way. There is another no, way. No, you will end up with no. a chronological Uncle, black. There hole. is another way. It's, because it's, it's not. You How can, could you, you can celebrate, mm. but celebrate with, in, in, with measure. Yeah. Mm. And so what the Afrocentric began to do now yep. was study. The, the, the history of Mali and Songhai right. and how they came to be yeah. in relation to um, the indigenous systems and social orders that were there, that were there at the time right. and, and what that relationship was like. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's deal with this now. You will know about the, 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 the recent finds of a lot, rediscoveries of a lot of, of a lot of the manuscripts that you were mentioning earlier yeah. in, in Mali. Mm -hmm. And the fact that when they were found, there was a big rush. Some people were trying to destroy them and these kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah? These people were not Afrocentrists, no. who were anti-Muslim. No. These people were Muslim fundamentalists. Yes. Right now, the, so the, the Afrocentrists said, "Raw, look at this. We found these. Let's go. We want to explore them. We want to see what comes out of them and them kind of things." There. It was right. us that was that, that was on that. Right now, but when we do study the civilization and, 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 and this history, what do we find? And you will know, for example, the 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 the, the, the contradictions that brought Askia the Great to power in relation to the, his predecessors, Sunni Ali, who they said was nominally Muslim. Right. Right? You see what I'm saying? He wasn't Muslim enough. Right. And his son, uh, I've forgotten his name. It's got out of my head. But he was not Muslim at all. Right. Yeah? And Askia came uh, to power because he deposed right. my man because he was not Muslim. Yes. And then you get, the, then you get now, um, the, those manuscripts that, they, that they're talking about, the Askias became the dominant force in the society. Right. And they began to write the history of the people. Good, good. And they, so they, they, their focus now became legitimizing the, 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 the dynasty of the Askias uh, and also establishing Islam. Yes. Right. Then Masha now, Allah. right, we love, <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. That's what they, that's what they yes. began to do. Yes. Then now you've got, then now you've got other groups of people in the empire. Right? Yes. Some who are not Muslim, and some who are Muslim, mm. but they're not. They 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 they, they retain some more of their their so African sure. centered. Yeah. So the the, the, the Sufi yep. more Sufi orders. Yep. And so whereas everybody's writing in Arabic, 
yes. or using the Arabic script. Right. The ASCII is right in Arabic. Yeah. Then you got the local people them, yeah. scholars what were them. they writing in what language? They were writing um, in a lot of the local languages. So there's a few of them. And in what script were they using? The Arabic script. Okay. Right. Yeah, but we know this, right? That's, that's, that's the point I was making. No, I, just like, I, they, don't, I just wanted you to say that for the camera. That's fine. Yeah, go on. I, I, I take I'm, your point. All right. It's, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. But they were writing in local languages. Right. And so that, they, they call, using so, the Arabic script. Yes, yes, yes. So, but they, they called that though the in in the uh, they call it the, the Ajami, 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 right? Now, if you want to learn the the, the the more deeper history of the people, the local history of the people, that the, the, the history that preserves more of the indigenous tradition, you have to read the Ajami scripts. Yeah. You're not going to get that from the, the from the from the from the, the the popular scripts that were being done by the ruling class and the elite. So there's a, there's there's something going on there, whereby I can explain that. Go on in. Go. What you have there is that both sets of scripts. Yes. First of all, using the Arabic script, yes. correct? Hausa. Yes. A scholar like Sheikh Usman Dan Fodio yes. wrote in four languages. Yes. Tamachek, mm -hmm. full full day. Yep. Hausa and Chi. Yep. And Arabic. Yep. Now, in writing in all these languages, mm -hmm. he was making the same information yes. available to those who spoke Hausa. Yes. The, the majority of that area spoke Hausa. Mm -hmm. but, but his people spoke full full day. Mm -hmm. He also studied in Air, mm -hmm. in parts of Nigeria, they spoke Tamachek. Mm -hmm. So he learned Tamachek. Mm -hmm. And of course, Arabic as the language which was like the international currency, mm -hmm. so that people a wider what is writing could reach a wider constituency. So that is one of the reasons why. And I think no, it's but a, I it's agree a, with you, but, 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 you, but, you're, but you're making my point. No, sir, but it's a good thing mm -hmm. that the Arabic script was introduced into Africa because then the local people can write Songhai, yep. Hausa, mm -hmm. Full Full Day, and all these languages okay. using the Arabic script. Was there, prior to Arabic as a language or a script mm. in Africa, yep. did Africans have problems communicating? Yes. Yes, and that is why Islam spread. Yes, you see when are you, you, are, are you get to clarify your argument. Let's say it because remember yes, they now, did. No, I'm but, going, but remember, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be bloody minded about no, it. Yes, they did. Okay. Arabic was a better thing for them. But, but, but you remember. <laughs> Man, say it straight. Man, don't listen to BBC. Man, don't listen to ITV. You had what I do? Listen. Why do you listen to Why do you listen to BBC? 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 Why do you there were rudimentary scripts developing among the Mandate people. Yeah. Right? Um, right? So, so, so the, idea, the idea that, 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 that the Africans needed the Arabic script to be able to develop a literary tradition is a historical. No, it's not. It, it, just, it just means. It's very historical. No, no, no. no, no. Go on. I know about the Mandate script. I know about the Mandate script. I'm not saying 